Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar uh, in our Engage with E-commerce series. The second episode is all around keeping it simple, stupid. I'm sure if you take yourself back to school, you would have heard of the KISS principle. And this applies still to online activity, right? So whether it's an Amazon page or a website, it's still really important to keep it simple. Let's not try and do everything for everybody. Let's do something and do it really well. So today we're going to tell people about what we're selling online and we're going to encourage you guys to do the same so we'll go through a series of concepts if i go to this next slide we'll talk about who we're selling to we'll talk about do people understand your products and proposition and that product or proposition may have changed since covid19 we'll talk about the ability for people to easily compare your products how we can help people to buy your products and how in the grand scheme of things we can make it easy because i don't know about you but I certainly don't have lots and lots of time to go and browse around lots of products. So I need the user journey to be as easy and simple as possible. And Louise, I'm sure you find the same, right? With a child and, and loads of work and everything else. Like it must and be you, so hard to find that. Of a goldfish. Yeah, I mean, I have like two and a half seconds before I forget where I'm on the website in the first place to so say, yeah, make it simple for me, please. So in terms of, uh, yeah, Eloise, just uh, what else can we look forward to in the next kind of couple of weeks? So um, after the end of this webinar, you will get a pop up in the Zoom um, asking if you'll go to a survey page. We'd love to hear what you thought of what we've done and any feedback. You'll also be um, able to put your details in to book a call with me to talk about anything to do with Amazon, um, whether you want to set up and you're still trying to get that sorted, whether you want to get more traffic to the page, get more sales. You can also select um, a website audit with um, Nathan to look at growing your e-commerce business you can sign up for some more webinars that we've got going and um, all it takes is when the zoom call closes you'll be asked to go forward to a different page and please just go for it because we'd really love to know how we did nathan and i being uber competitive overachievers um we want to make sure we do the best that we can yeah that's the main thing right you can't get make these things any better and provide even more value unless you get the feedback so the feedback we had on the first one was phenomenal and that'd be great to continue getting some feedback so we can test and measure and improve. And don't hesitate to say which one of you think is more, uh, which one of us is, is more awesome because, you know, <laughs> we're keeping <laughs> I, I, have had a a shave. I knew it. If I'd had a shave, I would have won. I need to, uh, I need to tidy up. Right. So let's get straight to it. The main thing I want to talk about from today, well, certainly the start, is who are you selling to? And I would start by saying that We've done a lot of work with a chap, um, Matt Sykes, actually. I believe you saw the podcast that we did recently. Um, if anyone hasn't had a look, check out mattsykes.biz, I believe. But essentially, the main thing he's taught us about is who we're selling to and understanding the ideal customer profile. I mean, when you're starting with a customer on Amazon, Eloise, how do you work out who they're selling to and, and who their customers are? Well, that's a really great question because... Um, I would hope that if you're selling um, anything, you've had to think about it already. But a really good example is a client I'm working with that sells um, men's, men's, um, some men's watches and they're very high end. So the question is, is he, are you selling to the bloke that has everything that wants to buy an expensive watch? Or are you selling to partner in their life who wants to gift them some the expensive watch because that's going to really really change how you're communicating with this particular client we've taken him on because he's getting a lot of bounce off his amazon page that means a lot of people are looking and not that many people are buying so we've got to try and figure out is it because the blokes don't understand it who want the nerdy watch or is it because the gift givers in that man's life um don't understand what the nerdy watch is and then bounce off so there's a lot of talking about what you know about your clients and make a few hypotheses and then running with them. Like we don't know until we test them. How about you? Well, this is a big thing, right? In fact, I'm just going to see if I can show you a document that we started using, which was super helpful for identifying our ideal customer profile. So I encourage anyone that hasn't to have a look at this and try and can everyone see that? Can you see that? Yeah, okay. Um, no, I think you are still on your PowerPoint screen, Nathan. You um, might need to stop sharing and start again and move to a different I'll, I'll screen. Try that. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, it's really important for me that you understand the demographics of that person. So you really get into the shoes of the customer. And I get that's very cliche, but actually, what are the demographics? Where do they live? What do they spend? How old are they? What are their shopping habits? Um, in fact, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to show you this. I'm sure it's worth putting up, taking the time to put something on. There uh, we go. How's that? 
Awesome. Like it. And this is Matt Sykes's. Uh... Yeah, this is Matt's um, system he used, and we use something very similar. So you start with the geographic profile, okay? Where are these people trying to sell? Rather than the spray and pray methodology that so many businesses adopt, what we really want to encourage is the ability to be laser focused because that means we can spread the marketing budget far less thinly, which means we therefore get a better shot at our target. So yeah, let's identify the geographical profile. Where are those people living and, and spending their time? Demographics wise, okay. Might be by income, might be occupation. A lot of businesses will target by job title. Then let's think about the psychographics. So what values do they have? How can we tap into those? I, I know some people on this call um, uh, particularly sell on value. I, I think of someone like uh, uh, Maikiki and, and Christy and her brand, and, and she's selling uh, women's underwear. But there's a type of demographic that really resonates uh, with that audience. So we need to target that. You then think about, okay, we've had those three. How can we narrow it down just to one personal business and create that real ideal customer profile? And then the, the kind of magic ingredients I always say is so many people do the top four. But then you have to think, okay, now let's put myself in the eyes of that customer. What problems can you help them solve? Okay, so what problems are there at the moment? And then how do I identify those problems? And then how do you solve those problems? Uh, and I guess much the same for you, Eloise, as well. I think that that's a really great um, thing to look at down, narrow it down to one personal business. I can see um, we've got Julia on the webinar and uh, you and I have both spoken to her. In, we've had conversations about there are a number of different types of customers that come to her website yes. and who are we speaking to? Are we speaking to the main one that, um, that is a certain demographic or the secondary? And you can't speak to everybody. Um, do you need to have something, a bit of something for everyone? If your main customer is a, a man 40 to 55 years old with a lot of disposable income that wants an expensive high-end watch, can we also speak to the girlfriend at the same time? If your main customer is is in a certain demographic, how how much can we hedge our bets, Nathan? Absolutely. Well, I I, I think when you look at someone like Ennis's brand is really interesting. She uh, runs essentially training courses for children with dyslexia, and then you think actually if we could focus all budget and attentions on just because you've got to think as well while the children are the people experiencing the challenge or issue they're not the person making the buying decision, right? The child doesn't buy the lessons. So that's just another thing I would add is when we think about it, we've got to think about not only the customer, but also who makes the purchase. So yes, we've got to think of the child and it's okay to run a series of ads to them, but actually it's better to run the ads to the, the person with the first strings, right? So it's going to be one of those things that 80% um, of your revenue is driven by a certain demographic. So just focus on them. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the 80 20 rule applies with any marketing, but even more when we're starting to do this, this type of really honing down is that 80% of our audience will be, will be kind of a, yeah, found with 20%. The 80 20 rule, in fact, can you see this? Oh, nice. Right. Let's start. Uh... <laughs> Good, another plug. I'm looking at the moment about 80 20 in your life, and essentially 80% of the activities generate 20% of your revenue. And I would encourage you to look at your marketing and, and start thinking, okay, actually probably 80% of the, the money you're spending uh, is, is probably wasted. And actually only 20% is, is getting the real cut through. So really start to analyze and test the measurement. We'll come to that shortly. So, so in conclusion, I guess from that Mike Sykes you, um, image you pulled up and what we would say as well is you really have to focus. You can't speak to anyone. You may be able to speak to, to, to more than one customer, but who's the main one and just make sure it really sings for them. So I know that when you guys, um, you were saying earlier when you do a discovery session you're going to make people focus before we start the web design before we start the copy who who do, who cares about your stuff more than anything this else is, this is it right start with a goal and work backwards stop coming up with a design building this site and then going okay now who's it for no no go to the end and then reverse engineer the process so who am i trying to talk to how am i going to reach them and then what do they expect and what does this site look like or amazon uh, campaign look like etc etc that's really, really important. And it could be, and this is when we all need to do that, that actually the people we're speaking to aren't our ideal customers, aren't the people that we really want to. And that's when it's good if we've already got websites or Amazon campaigns or things going, are they really the people that I want to speak to now? And then, and then just making that judgment call, no, I need to stop and refocus. This is it. I think there's a bit of a reality check sometimes when you do 
and, and COVID has certainly given a lot of businesses that, right? That bit of time to step back and really review what they're doing. And so many people will have analytics set up, they'll have all the tracking, but they'll never use it. So now's the perfect time to really look at it and go, wow, actually you're spot on. I'm, I'm sending loads of traffic here. And while it's great that we're getting loads of visitors, we're getting no conversions. And unfortunately, the way the world in which we live in, conversions are what really matter, right? So actually let's stop spraying and praying. There's no excuses anymore. Now let's just cut to it. Let's really hone in on our marketing efforts and let's make sure we're speaking to the right people at the right time with the right message. And with the right reasons why we're solving that problem, which is the last thing on that, on that slide we, we had up right at the beginning. So then uh, let's, let's get into the meat of the matter. How, how do we get people to understand what, what we're selling? I think the first thing is being stupid. Yeah. Do you say there's a question or a good no, question? I said there are, it's a big question. We, we know our target market. We really decided we're going to focus on one segment that we think we're going to get the most of our revenue from. How can we explain that on, a, on an e-commerce website? What, what are some of the levers we can pull? Yeah, I think that the main thing to talk about first would be making the proposition super clear. In fact, I've got an example that I'll just share with you. I was having a look at this morning and I've never seen something like it. I was in, I was in fits of laughter. Um, let me just get up. Can everyone see this site here? User testing. No. Oh. And grin .net. Does it come up now? There yeah. we go. There we go. So this site is just unbelievable, right? So what I'm talking to people about, let's get the proposition right. Let's keep it super simple. Let's easily sell the next step. And then you get someone like this. Okay, so you've come to this site, you're thinking, okay, I'm ready to buy. And you just get that decision paralysis of what on earth do I do next? This is so <laughs> complex. I really don't know where to look or what to do. And actually, I feel a bit uncomfortable and I'll probably leave. I'm sure you've seen sites similar. I'll see if I can get the UK version, but this is just... Do I buy the lorry or do I buy the jet plane, right? That's, that's pretty impressive. Wow. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. I think up here, the thing is as well, is making sure that you're managing expectations. So up here, I see, okay, it's all in Danish. I'm going to change it to English. And I go to English and actually they're trying to sell me a translator not uh not actually the conversion of the page well okay you're not solving my problem here really i mean this is the most backwards thing i've seen i, I think it's ridiculous so there's a lot going on with this, can... we are assuming... this is a bad example nathan can we just be clear on that oh yeah no please please don't do this like essentially what i'm really keen to show you is some good examples and bad examples and it's really important when you're thinking of user experience and design, we're trying to make it as clear and concise as possible to easily sell the next step. And there's a great example of that in some of the, the websites coming on. But I certainly, I thought this this morning, I thought it raised a, a bit of a smile. Certainly for me, I just thought, wow, if I'm looking to, to clearly sell the next step and reflect our proposition nice and easily, this is probably not the way to do it. Great point. Great point. Um, I think for, for, for people selling on Amazon, especially if you've got lots of different things, there are some really key ways to do that. I'm just going to jump and share my screen if I can, um, because what people want is easy, easily made decisions. And um, here, for example, we have a company selling um, Hawaiian shirts of different types. Well, this one has dinosaurs and lasers. Um, but it's in the broad category of Hawaiian shirts. So this, this company is not trying to reinvent the, the wheel. Anything that's remotely Hawaiian shirt-like, whether we've got blue pineapples with sunglasses or um, wolves with moons, he's just put them all on one page because really he's saying the category, I'm looking, I've got young men looking for funky shirts for a night out. Therefore, I'm going to plonk them all on the same page and then you just browse through all the solutions. He's not trying to do 17 different product pages. You've just got everything on one page and then you choose the funky design that works out for you. And that's a really good lesson. A lot of people on Amazon will make 20 different product pages and then you're just splitting all the number of people who are going to see your product. Put them all on one if they're more or less a variation and make life simple for people. Yeah, in interesting. When you look at the, the web examples of that, and I see with that site we've just looked at, which as we said, and I've, I mean, I found another one here earlier as well, where it is almost too much information. And then you go across to some of these other sites and I, I really liked what they did at BH Photo and Video. So they've also got masses of products, right? But at the same time, it's super clear, it's super crisp, it's nicely categorized. 
And that's very easy and very logical the next step. And that's what I encourage you all to do when you're thinking of your web pages is think about the customer journey. Think about how you're going to take them through the funnel. So from the start of the website through to purchase. And then think about how can you make it as easy and frictionless as possible. So we don't need to ask loads of questions. We don't need them to fill out loads of forms. We don't need to trap them by, uh, yeah, you have to go and see this and see this and compare this. How can we quickly as possible get them through the funnel? And I think if you just go onto that live stream from home example, I was just thinking the first thing that I saw there, and I'm not particularly a consumer in that category, if you can just yeah. share that screen up yeah, again. Sure. Uh, the first um, slider said some, uh, I don't know if it's gone on now, but I guess yeah. um, it work, work from home made easier. I have no idea what this company does, but now I know it's going to help me work from home easier. And that really spoke to me because, okay, there's a lot of things, a lot of items, a lot of consumer gear here. It's just pointing into that problem everybody has, whether we want camcorders, whatever that is, or uh, computers or audio, we want to make, everyone now wants to work from home. Everyone now wants to live stream from home. And they've, I bet that's new in the last four weeks, that, that slider with those messages on. Definitely. People buy with emotion at the end of the day. So it's really important you connect with that audience and you, you solve their problem. This is the perfect example of solving problems problem. Uh, and I think we'll come to another one later, actually, where, yeah, in fact, I'll save that. I'll save that. There's a lovely example of this a bit later on as well, which we'll come back to. So what are we looking at? We've talked about, OK, do people really understand the product we're selling? So it doesn't matter if you're selling tools or you're selling Hawaiian shirts or you're selling video cameras, whatever it is. Do people understand what we're doing? And are people able to easily navigate the site through categorization, through variations, through tags, etc.? Not too many options or offers is the big thing with all of that, right? Let's not blind people with so many options they can't make a decision. Absolutely. And I think um, even on Amazon, like I showed that very clean, clear example of Hawaiian shirts. Um, another example which um, possibly doesn't do such a good job is when we have, um, if I could just get my, oh, sorry, a bit of, here we are, this one here. This is a company that is um, making trampolines and wants to give you every single bit of detail that's possible about that trampoline. There is a lot of text on this page and this is an Amazon page. There is so much text that you have to start clicking little buttons to get more text. And I would say that although the design in and of itself is simple, we've got lots of lifestyle pictures and that type of stuff, the anxiety with which you want to explain everything, every single problem you could solve for your customers, that might actually be a hindrance. Just solve the top three like uh like in that uh, image that you had because if the more you start plugging people with solutions they're going to get they're going to get their brain is going to explode definitely so the next thing i wanted to talk about eloise is how we can help people to buy so we've got them on the we've got them on the site we've shown them the proposition we've made it nice and easy but even if we do all the they always say you can take the horse to water but you can't make a drink right we've done all the hard work and yet still they're not purchasing how do we help them or give them a helping hand to to just nudge them over the line is there anything on Amazon that can do that? So, yeah. So um, with the Hawaiian shirts example, we've got variations. You've got a bunch of different shirts, but they're all novelty shirts for blokes on a night out. Another thing you can do on your A plus content, if you're the brand owner, is show people a range rather than um, if rather than just having Hawaiian shirts, we might be able to have Hawaiian shirts plus funky socks or something like that. And here, um, if I bring up um, a beauty example, this is where we can, enable people we're doing something beautiful vitamin serum we've got lots of great things about you the benefits well he knew what we had vitamin serum we've got retinol serum we've got hyaluronic acid serum all of the poss possible serums you might need in life are on this product page with a link to another amazon uh ASIN, another amazon page so in that way if you've got the buyer's interest but actually vitamin c serum might not be the right fit for them you're offering them on a plate a solution. They don't have to go browse anywhere. They don't have to jump off the page. They've already got another lot of options with some explanations right in front of you. Um, and that, that is one way of helping solve people's problems. Yeah, I, th I think that's a great example. I mean, for, for us, certainly in the web world, one of the main tools we use to help people purchase is live chat. So getting a live chat box on your website. And uh, I mean, the Yondal, uh, talk.to, there's hundreds of solutions out there. But some people just aren't ready to purchase. But at the same time, we don't want them dropping out the funnel entirely. 
So how can we just give them a bit like in a shop, I guess, if you see someone walking aimlessly around the store, you're thinking, okay, do they need a bit of a helping hand? Can I just give them, uh, yeah, just five minutes of my time and see if I can push this purchase over the line? I'm and so really I interested to know if you have any stats for live chat. Just because I'm not a live chat user, if I'm browsing in, you know, three in the morning after my kids woken up and I've got a live chat box appearing, I'm like, you are not awake. Uh, is this a bot? Am I going to get any sensible answers? Do we have any idea about when that's a really good fit? Does it work for clothing? Does it work for beauty? Does it work for, uh, I don't know, lessons and training? Is, are there any sweet spots for live chat or should just everybody have them? Great shout. I think it, the, the main thing I would say is test and measure. I mean, the example I always use is, is Braymont Watches. Actually, you would have thought through a brand like that, is live chat going to be relevant? Yet yeah, I'm led to believe they had live chat installed and managed to sell a four to five thousand pound watch. So all of a sudden you think, okay, is there a business case for live chat? Well, absolutely there is. If I can sell that kind of price of watch on live chat, then I believe many of us listening today whose products may be slightly lower in price, I, th I think it's an, an invaluable tool. I mean, the main thing is I would run it for a period of time. I'll just show you this yonder example, Louise, and see what you think. Um, here, this is the brand. This is the Braymont example that I just talked about. And here's the live chat. And so okay. it's with a plugin called Yomdol. Is that a, um, well, well, this, a, this one is a live, way of having Yeah, this one is live chat, uh, which is a different plugin. This one over here, well, it's a Shopify app. This company here, Yomdol, is the one we've used before. And as you see, you get this Oliver reporting agent. You can chat away to Oliver. Uh, see if I can chat to him. And then it's it's manned all around the world, right? So actually, oh, now it's Tina. <laughs> so fair enough. Um, but yeah, you, essentially you can manage, um, you, you can get this fully outsourced and managed. So you ask them a series of questions. They will ask you a series back. And then they essentially set this up on your site. And then they almost act as your sales agents, right? And then they take a commission. So, so, so In fact, it's not necessarily bots. You could buy... A bot I'm guessing someone that has all their automatic reply uh, questions and responses or you can uh, get this particular plugin which will have a support agent somewhere around the world that probably has a script of the top 20 questions that your customers are likely to ask that they can then reply to do. do we know the price point for any of these type of things I mean there's obviously a price point to install it in your website yeah, and a price point then to run it on a monthly basis exactly right I mean off the top of my head I think it's around 200 pound a month monthly spend i mean we use it a, a quick file right we have a live chat application because if one customer just needs that little helping hand to make a decision maybe they're not sure about oh okay do these guys specialize in x type of website or can they do y I, i've given you a, a whole list of faqs almost um and look at this tina's coming back and trying to help and trying to push us along that funnel i think it's a, a great example and i've always been really impressed with those guys if I just stop bothering Tina for a second, because <laughs> I appreciate that she's probably got better things to do. The other example I wanted to show you about selling that next step and making it super clear is Grays. I'm sure you've all heard of Grays, like a lovely snack company, meteoric rise in the last few years. But actually, very, very simple. They're almost holding my hand and saying, look, you're on the site now, massive green button. This is all you've got to do, just get started. And then it takes you on the journey. And that is the perfect way to do it. Let's not make the user hunt to find the next step. Let's almost walk them through it. Again, brilliant example here. Four-step process. Let's get started. Register, check out, tailor your box. You can see where you are in the process. They've done it brilliantly. So in this way, we're not, we're not getting busy with, with chats. With, that's really a design solution you've got 100%, 100%. there. 100%. Just chat, going chat, back to that. that. But I'm just going back to what you said about the chat, really, depending on your price point of what the items you're selling, 200 quid a month could easily be an investment, depending on how, what your initial, um, your, your likely initial spend with the client is. That's a lot cheaper than I would have thought. Um, and definitely yeah, something yeah, that we absolutely. Have. It, like you say, it just takes one or two sales to make that purchase, well, depending on the cost of your product and the margins on your product to make it a worthwhile investment. But there are free solutions as well where you can man the chat yourself, even if you want to man it. I see some businesses that man it nine to five uh, within their own business. And then the, the bit they neglect, of course, is the out of hours. That's sometimes where most people are purchasing, right? They don't always shop nine to five. They normally will be flicking through their phone while watching Coronation Street or whatever. And therefore, that's the perfect time to have someone live chatting. If you don't want to do yourself, just outsource it and get someone else to look after it.
And I'm just looking at a question that Ashley's got up. Um, he's he has a training and development uh, website, um, and I think he's 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 uh, he's just asked a question. Top tips, and I guess if you're selling something that may have something that needs to be understood, training it's an emotional purchase, and you want to know what the content is. I'm wondering whether these type of things would be a good place to start. Like, what stops your customer buying? Probably you need to think about that, and then we can help you find the top tips to solve that problem. Absolutely. I think for Ashley, the, the one thing I would encourage him to look at is what products does he have for prospects? So how can he get people to start that sales journey with a, a giveaway or something where Ashley's giving value, proving his worth and then getting him into the sales journey? So, yes, live chat might be great for Ashley in this business. But right now, think of something, an audit, a questionnaire or something which can get them engaged and get them started frictionless as possible. And then you can start to think about, OK, how can you upsell and cross sell from there? And also so that they really understand what you're offering and that they make sure it's right for them. So one thing I just wanted to briefly touch upon, Eloise, was the allowing people to compare and the A plus content that's available on Amazon. I mean, Amazon seemed to do this fantastically well and almost are the best case study. Do you want to share a little bit more on that? Sure, let's do that. So there's a couple of different options uh, and we'll go back to this particular A plus where the company has thought through what it's selling and create this section of the page to drive people through the routine you need and the other products in, uh, that are possible to buy. Now, of course, you might not be doing this so well. Um, the Hawaiian shirt company, I shouldn't think has got, oh, yeah, they're giving us information, but they're not showing us the range. They're just showing us the funky shorts that can go with it. Um, that isn't necessarily driving people to a shorts page because you're not giving them a, a, a link to click on. So they're missing a trick here because if you want to buy a pint of beer shorts, I have no idea where to get them. And it's a kind of a generic weird name brand. So I, you might have lost me over here, whereas the beauty brand have got it well. Again, with the trampoline company, they are delivering us a massive amount of technical information. There is no stone left unturned with this company. But actually, they sell a bunch of lots of different ones. How do I know that? Because Amazon's telling me. Amazon does a great job of telling me what other people look for but the trampoline company isn't. So again, we're missing a trick by not, um, not using this, this uh, section to the best of our ability. And one third um, uh, example I'd like to give you is water bottles, super generic, very commoditized. How can we get people excited about it? So this company again has given us a lot of variations of color on the same page. And on their A+, they're also trying to entice us in Possibly with not the greatest English, but I love it. Do you drink enough of water? We can't have live chat in uh, Amazon. Does any of that sound familiar? They're really trying to engage us with a conversation um, to get us to, to understand their products before showing us the range. This is really best practice. We've even got a tech spec um, grid to show us which one provides which hydration solution. But this is, if you're selling more than one item on Amazon, you should definitely be bossing your A-plus to do as much work as it can. I really, I really like that water, uh, Nathan? Yeah, I, well, I really like that example. I certainly don't drink enough water. And the nice thing what they did is they, they talk to people's emotions. And that's what I say. While we're trying to keep it simple, a lot of that comes through in the messaging. Like, actually, let's not try and overcomplicate someone. Let's, honestly, let's have a conversation as if it's you and I just speaking over a coffee or is you and I just speaking in a shop. So how can we keep it nice and easy? Let's not bamboozle people with jargon. And a really nice example of that in terms of selling on emotion online and, and kind of not losing that human piece was that the guys over at Gerald's, um, I, I mean, I love Gerald's as a, as a brand uh, and obviously a local brand is, is super popular with me, but if you have a look uh, at nice it, Norwich speaks in Gerald yeah, Major Norwich department. Exactly. Store. This is a lovely example, right? So it was my grandmother's 89th birthday this weekend, and uh, I was talking to her, and she was just been busy making puzzles. And so I was having a look at some puzzles, and actually, it's perfect that you kind of. And I, I know Christy on this call with my key, he does a very similar thing in terms of you're selling the aspect of that situation as well as just the product. So. Yes, you can see the product if you really want to. You can see the 40 piece jigsaw, et cetera, et cetera. But you can also see the kind of husband and wife, elderly couple on the table with the tea and biscuits, with the reading glasses, with the daffodils. It's just that kind of perfect um, scene. And I think that's really important is to include lifestyle photography as well as just very clean cut product photography. That's, that's, a really great, um, that's a really great shout. And actually I'd like to bring up something 
which which kind of um, shows what happens when people people what happens when they when they slightly lose touch of what's going on on Amazon in regard in relation to their own websites. Oh, sorry, that was a technical fail. Let me try again. Um, da, 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 here we are. So we have um, a. This is a, a health nutrition wellness brand and they have beautiful website with all the great bars you can eat when you're running your marathons or that type of thing and it's giving us a lot of love about the brand and the product and when you see the boxes we are attracted to this 10 pack the six pack of um of stuff we love it when we get onto their amazon page they miss the trick if i can just bring up this tab all they're giving us is a box all of the love and the branding and the attention they have on their own website is lost. I don't, I don't feel like I'm an athlete anymore. I feel like I'm in the wholesalers. And that's where the lifestyle shorts that you showed for Gerald and that Tribe indeed have on their own website, maybe they have lower down the page, but they have kind of neglected what is just as important on Amazon as their own website. It's like give people an idea of why they should be eating that, job, that, that wellness bar. That's a great shout, actually. It becomes very cold and you lose that personality. And, and that's the main thing is while in this story today, we're trying to encourage people to keep it simple and not overcomplicate things. We're absolutely not encouraging people to lose the personality behind the brand. There's just there's easier ways to show personality than trying to show every single variation under the sun or just trying to like we saw in those shocking sites earlier where it's like, um, almost like vomit of just here's everything just go and choose well no 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 like, just, I can't choose for you yeah no solve your customers problems for you but I think um, and that comparison and, and, and Gerald doesn't have an Amazon uh, they might have an Amazon UK site but we didn't we didn't take the time to compare but if you think about what all of the passion that you've put into your own website and if you're also selling on Amazon why does it look rubbish because people love brand on Amazon just as much as um as they will love it on your own website and just because every other competitor under the sun is on amazon doesn't mean that you can't shine by telling people a great story and i'm um, just giving allowing people to compare the options in just as way you would have done on the website for sure one little example i will show is i was looking for some trainers the other day actually and i loaded this up this morning when i was thinking about today but you see these here i think it's, it's really yeah, I think it's really important that while I'd probably look ridiculous in such white shoes, it's really <laughs> important to think about, okay, super clean, super simple. We're selling the next step. But actually, one thing I do encourage you to do is almost um, layer in a safety blanket. And um, that safety blanket I normally refer to as a wish list. So I just think, okay, you've got someone this far. We've pushed them all the way down the funnel. We've paid them to come to the site. We've got them through possibly the homepage or category page. They're onto a product page. We're about to get them to purchase. Something's happened and they, they're now not longer, no longer going to purchase. This little love heart here is part of a wish list. And it's a super simple thing to do on sites, but I don't understand why more brands don't do it because it's a signal of intent. And I've just been reading a lot, and I know you have as well, the book Oversubscribed. And what we're trying to get is signals of intent to purchase. So if someone puts in the wish list, then we can remarket to them. Then we can push promotions to them. We can do all sorts, but actually we've got them on into the fund or into another like sales funnel, if you like. And I see so many brands just neglect this and actually go buy it or don't buy it, take it or leave it. There is another opportunity to say, okay, not quite ready. No problem. Let's start the process, but just in a slightly softer way. Okay. So walk me through this because um, not knowing very much about um, wish lists and hearts and stuff like that. I don't have to be logged into your website to create a wish list is it something to do with cookies that is then gonna register without actually me signing up to be an email or subscriber or something like that yeah i mean the the, the case they use here right is i've just put that item on a wish list it then creates me a wish list here to wish list and something i'm trying to create for some of our clients at the moment because it doesn't matter if you're selling trainers or you're selling uh, properties whether it be through uh, rentals or, or kind of airbnb style accommodation is how can we essentially store a collection? Because a lot of people, if it's a bigger purchase, will need to compare or will need to uh, refer like with a partner to say, okay, is it okay I, I spend this on X? So actually creating a wish list where you can easily save it, easily distribute it and share it is a really, really powerful tool. But what I'm saying is in a, you don't need to get people to sign up to create a wish list. You can make cool. it easy to do a wish list. 
as, I, as I've just shown here, right, all I had to do is hit the heart and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm in my saved items and here's my wish list. And then we go, okay, so I've, I've decided actually I'm not going to purchase. I'll come back a few, uh, like a few hours later. Okay, great. Let's add this to my basket. I'm now ready to move it from my wish list to the bag and I can carry on my journey. And, and bam, look at that. Straight in the basket. Like that is an effortless process. And the guys here have spent, well, I dare say, thousands and thousands of pounds at ASOS trying to get this process right. But uh, we said this on the last webinar, right? Don't reinvent the wheel. There's so many opportunities for us to learn from these big brands and say, actually, what do they do and how can we do something similar? So anybody can, if, if they've got the type of website that you work with, this is an easy fix. It's not hard to set up. Yes, it's not hard to set up. There are third-party integrations. If you think of like a Shopify, there's plenty of Shopify apps that allow you to do this. The question I would have is when you're building a wish list, how can you take a wish list to the next level? So not only can they store information easily, but actually you can then do more information. You can do things with the wish list, not just store product, but then can you take it to the next level and remarket to those people? To say, you know that pair of jeans that are just sitting in this basket or this ceramic mug or this lesson or this course or this pair of underwear, whatever it is, how can I then go back to you at a time, like, I don't know, a day later, a couple of days later, if you haven't added it to basket and go, okay, are you now ready to make that purchase? Because they've signaled intent. So all of these fun plugins and stuff, what we're saying is they have to be part of, you have to, they have to be part of some kind of user journey that you've thought out. Like you know who your customer is, you're trying to sell to them. Don't just put loads of mad Shopify options on your website if you haven't thought what's this, the next action, how can you move it down the line? let's not just stack it high full of extensions and plugins and apps and things like that just because we want to offer all things to all people let's make a business case for having a wish list some people a wish list just simply won't work for um the gentleman that was talking to us earlier ashley i can't imagine someone trying to book a training program would add a training course to a wish list i don't think it would quite work i think it's better suited to so retail, if you're thinking of, okay, well, yeah, I'm buying clothes or I'm buying machinery parts or I'm buying even cars or holidays would be another one. Okay, I'm going to compare. I mean, that's another thing. Wish lists allow you to make comparisons. So you say, okay, I'm going to do some research because I'm going on holiday and imagine that. Uh, gone COVID, I'm going on holiday in a few months' time. Great. Here's property A, here's property B, here's property C. They all accept dogs. This property has these features, this one, these features, this one, these features. My wish list allows me to really easily compare and then go and justify it with my other half to say, are we happy to go away? Great. Here's some solutions. Which one do you think is best? Okay, that's really helpful. So there's a lot of options, but we definitely need to not just go, go, go completely trigger happy with all of the different plugins we can get on Shopify because it's just <laughs> courses. It's expensive. Is that part of your job, Nathan, when you're working with your clients? Just say no. Yeah. Well, sometimes to rein them in, right, and say, actually, there's loads of stuff we can do, but what's the business case for this? Just because it only seems like an extra nine ninety nine a month or something, actually, that can soon add up. Before you know it, you're spending hundreds of pounds a month on plugins and extensions and apps and third-party integrations, and, and that's brilliant. But actually, yeah, does anyone actually use it? And that's one thing I would say, and that takes us on nicely to this next part around test and measure. I've got, I always say this time and time again, I've got concepts and theories, you have, the client has, but we're always doing this for our clients' clients. And so if you look at this site here, usertesting.com, there's plenty of other people that do this, but let's get some feedback. Let's set up a little user group and let's actually get some data. Let's just not make decisions based on hunches. Oh, I think a wish list will be great for my site. Yeah, well, it might be, but actually let's try it. Let's get some feedback. And then let's see it's something we want to roll out on a full-time basis. It seems walk silly. Us through this. If this is a user testing service, walk us yeah. through what this is. Yeah, user testing service. So I've started looking at user testing more and more. Essentially, it takes groups of your audience type and then allows them to give you feedback on your site. Because like I say, while I might think it looks great and while you, the business owner, may think it looks great, we need to know what the customers think. So they have a pool of people around the world that are uh, kind of interested in your product or service or niche and allow you to go and test it. And uh, we kind of allow them to go and test it on our behalf. So, okay, here's 15 people looking at these kind of products. Can you go and test it? So I see Jess from Fresh Ground is on this call as well. That might be a great thing for her to say, actually, she's worked hard to get the site to where it is. We've worked hard in putting it together based on our best practice and ideas. 
actually now who's buying this product back to the very start of this keep it simple who's buying the product now let's run a case study where we say let's send 20 of those people to the site can they easily navigate do they get stuck is there decision paralysis paralysis for them if so what do we need to do to change it do you know what this brings me back to the, the webinar where we're running with uh, Frankie from TCA fit on um, on Thursday afternoon because when I was chatting to him last week now this is a guy who has made Amazon work for him and do you know what he did this is exactly what he did when he set up his Amazon store he got his friends and family round next to him with a laptop and he'd get them to search whatever keyword it was let's say it was trainers or boxing shorts or whatever it was and he would watch them to see where their eye flickered and where they stopped because obviously if you search for something on Amazon, you'll get a long list of similar products. And that's how he engineered his product pages to be the best. The simplest type of user testing, which is get your friends around the phone and watch what they do. Everyone has that at their disposal. And okay, we're all gonna argue with our family and probably not trust them, but you just get a bunch of people. That's totally affordable. We can all get, um, get someone in our household unless it's the dog to, uh, to user test our website. And we've got to start somewhere and you can do it just as well on Amazon. I wonder if those user testing guys will, will do it for your Amazon page. It might be, it'd be something worth, uh, worth Googling afterwards. Definitely. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's well worth it. And I think the other thing to think about as well is it's now's the perfect time to start being a little bit creative. Essentially, you've got a few people there that um, if I show you this, and it was just baymard.com. I'll load that up, but it's a great way as well to test and measure user experience. So it's not enough. Now uh, I get so many people saying, okay, what is great user experience? But I don't guys... understand any of the words on that page. Can you just like, what the <laughs> hell is this? Yes. Yeah, so this is e-commerce user experience for that site. We looked at earlier, this BH photos. Do you remember we looked at that and had really oh, nice. Right, right, right. This is a website that helps you say how another website is easy to navigate exactly right so it's saying okay let's learn from those back to that not reinventing the wheel let's see what they're doing well you can have a look and say okay what are they doing well on the home page it's scoring 96 out of good where are the gaps at go down here category pages not done so well on-site search done well it's a really useful tool to look at the best of the best in the industry to say okay what are they doing really well and actually, where are the gaps that I need to make sure I don't fall into those kind of same pitfalls? So, so Baymar.com will run user experience uh, for your company, but they also have things on their website that you can say, oh, that website looks interesting. What did Baymar say about it? And it's a free, that's a freebie. Uh, well, certainly for the, the insight I'm showing you here, this bit's free. There are premium levels, but the main thing I'd encourage people to do is when they're thinking about their own user experience, for those listening and watching, I would encourage you to have a look at Baymar.com try and find a business that is similar in your niche or industry and then see what they're doing really well. So, okay, baymod.com is highlighted here, the great use of search and, and there's a brilliant autocomplete function within a lot of search filters, which people always miss. So it doesn't consider typos or it doesn't, again, some of these words here, like essentially you don't want to be typing in a long phrase or, or strap line. Essentially, if you can just start typing in the first few letters and it says this, perfect. What a great experience. So there's loads and loads of examples of nice little, nice little things that, um, that these guys have done. And then you can just copy it, copy it, fake it till you make it. Like, like you know, let's not, let's not try and rethink design, go and see what other people are doing and figure out what's best for your I, business. I think that the, the main thing is, is yeah, just learn and test and measure in everything you do. And don't think that you have to tread this path alone and you have to do something totally unique. Yes, okay, we might want to disrupt, but at the same time, there are great examples to learn from to then apply your own thinking to. So I would say on, on the Amazon side, one of the things that people, um, I was speaking with a client earlier this week, people can come across problems when you've done your Amazon page and it's been around for a while and you didn't want to update it. People can then get pushback from, from Seller Central on Amazon that won't update your pages and there are ways to get around it happy to have a chat and there are, there are also specialist services for, for, for that type of thing as well if I can put you in touch with. It is possible to update your Amazon page, the title, the bullet points, the photography and there are ways of doing it especially if you're selling in Europe you need to do it in a structured way so suddenly you um, 
you're not trying to update things in Europe and messing up what you've already done in the UK. So it is possible to update pages on Amazon, but you might need a bit of help if you're, having, if you're coming um, unstuck. So always get in touch. I'll happily point in the right direction. In terms of just a, under th thinking of your Shopify things, with those um, Shopify apps that may give you Q&A or other things, are they things that they'll nail you for a year-long subscription or is it easy to test and measure with that stuff? Can yeah, you do like a month, couple of months trial? Yeah, monthly, monthly rolling or a 30-day free trial. Quite a lot of these offer a, a free trial period, which is perfect, right? Get it on there. No risk. Yeah. Test the measure and then work from, work from there. Now, looking at recapping today's session, I appreciate we've gone into lots of different rabbit holes and explored lots of different things, as we always do. And, and that's great because I think it's really important that we are as thorough as possible. But the main topics for today were keep it simple. So if we just go through what we've looked at, We've talked about who we're selling to, and I encourage anyone on this webinar, if you're gonna take one thing from today, is just go and revisit who your ideal customer profile is and who it is that you're selling to. Let's start being really laser focused with our marketing efforts, as opposed to spraying and praying and trying to please everybody, and as a result, pleasing nobody. The next thing we talked about is, do people understand us? And is our proposition nice and clear, and the steps easy to follow? We saw some great examples from Amazon of people doing it very well. And we saw some maybe not so great examples on the websites of people doing it fairly poorly saying, here's all my stuff, you make the decision. No, 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 you get them to the website and you effortlessly take them through the process, making sure the user doesn't have to do the work. Again, taking it to an offline example, if you're going in a shoe shop, I don't want all the shoes all over the floor in a massive heap and you have to sift through to find out what shoes for you, you want it beautifully laid out. So think about that. The ability to compare is massively important. And now so more than ever, there's so much choice online. We need to make sure, and again, I, I believe Amazon probably do this better than most. The kind of, okay, people that bought this also bought this, or have you thought about this? I, I think that's a great way for people to say, yeah, actually, let's just compare purchase to make sure we're getting the right product. We then talked about helping people buy and how we need to give them the helping hand, whether it be live chat uh, or whether it be some other process. But most of all, we've got to make it easy. There is no good us trying to overcomplicate things, put in thousands of decisions, put in loads of bottlenecks. Let's try and keep the process as clean, as simple as possible. And that's where I'd always say, have a chat with someone else. And it doesn't mean you have to pay massive money to a marketing agency. You need to get someone who is not in your business, who doesn't love your product as much as you do, to give you a second opinion. Whoever that person is, get somebody who's outside of your head whether you you go for that user testing option and get and pay a bunch of people around the world to do it that's one very quick and easy way and i'm sure you can get that done in 24 hours or ask somebody else because you'll never do it if you just don't ask anybody because you're uh, doing a poll of just people in the business is it's just not going to give you the answers you need and i'd really encourage you to be brave enough and ask other people to help you along that journey I think that's a great shout. You have to leave emotion at the door sometimes and be prepared for some honest feedback. Okay. If you're going to ask people, the whole point is they're going to feedback honestly, not just a massage ego. So some people might say this bit doesn't make sense to me that, but I don't understand your proposition is not clear enough. Your product photos aren't good enough. That's valuable information. That's absolute gold. That's what we, we want to be finding out from your friends or, or to target audience, not from the actual prospect. We want to get there first. So yeah, don't be afraid to get feedback. But honestly, if it's a family member, also ask non-family members because we'll always hate what they say. So you know, spread spread out the the <laughs> spread out the poll and make sure there is a critical mass of people saying one thing. Don't just don't just yeah, get the first with the loud. Well, it's got to be relevant to the audience as well, right? While I do sometimes say ask your gram because it's great to see if it's simple and it makes sense. Also, is my gram purchasing my product? It would be great also to go to a, okay, my product's geared between, for people between the ages of 25 and 30. Okay, let's find people between the ages of 25 and 30 that might buy this thing. You must have people in your network that you can tap into. Can they just give you 10 minutes of their time to have a look? Exactly. That's, that's super important. I think that um, uh, perhaps before we, we jump to the end, anyone wants to jump on the Q&A and ask some, uh, some questions, please. Um, we'll allow you them to just type in some questions. I know that any right at the beginning, we were looking at getting traffic to your Amazon page. Um, you were working Amazon. And the first thing I would say before we worry about getting people to the, the page, 
what does the page look because once people are there people have to think is this solving my pain point my problem and who are you talking to on the page so really what we've said today about making your proposition really understandable for your amazon page will then enable more people to understand it and will enable you to get more people on the page but before you perhaps you and i should have a chat um about what does the page look like and is it really clear to your target market yeah, anyone great. else got any questions about what we've uh, discussed um this morning I think well, um, you could just uh, put the slide up about the other webinars that we've got coming up, Nathan. Yeah, of course. All right. Good. Share screen. There we go. Here we go. So some upcoming well, webinars to look forward to. As you talked about, really looking forward to hearing what Frankie's got to say on Thursday. Uh, he's gone on an incredible journey and actually sometimes it's it's nice to hear it from agency folks such as ourselves but it's also lovely to hear it from the horse's mouth someone that's actually taken a product sold it on amazon and done fantastically well sweating blood i think the key point when it's when it's business only always knowing that it's it's uh it's going to come from from the heart and then we've got a couple of webinars next week and the week after about how to get repeat business and also how to we back on about test and measure. This is going to give us a structured approach for the, the five key things we really should be measuring and how to start that journey. A couple more questions have come up. Um, um, thanks very much for the kind words, Ashley. Very engaging session. Please do tap us up to look at the strategy. Um, Brian Bales has said the wish list is a good idea. I think definitely, Brian, in your you've got some beautiful handmade products and um, of a great diversity that i think for your for your type of um business that would be a great a great shout and i'm sure nathan give you a hand with that yeah of course we will so i think yeah like i say we've got the one on thursday we've got a session next week around keeping your customers coming back and, and that's the main thing so many people focus on let's just pour new traffic into the funnel and let's get new new business every single time but actually one of the hardest things is getting someone to purchase when we've got them to purchase let's remarket to them and let's try and get them back in the funnel because there'll be a much easier process so that's going to be a great session on the 12th and if, they can't, if they won't necessarily be buying you can also get them to tell other people about your awesomeness so there, there are ways they to become means. ambassadors they become advocates and i know again christian the call has, has just released a kind of ambassador program and, and done fantastically well from it and i encourage all brands to to do the same let's try and find active sales agents or ambassadors that will sell your product for you right and do a lot of the hard work um almost for you uh in terms of the last one he's awesome uh, there we go like more, like more people more people like that would be uh would be wonderful the last thing uh as well is stop panicking and start growing test and measure we go on about this every single webinar we'll continue to go on about it because it's not given the attention it deserves we need to start thinking strategically about let's run a campaign let's test it let's see what works let's see what didn't and then let's try something different. Too many people do this for like a couple of campaigns and then they just leave it, right? They think, oh, okay, the, the site's good enough. You have a website, you get it built, you leave it, or you create an Amazon campaign, you leave it, you think your job's done, your job's only started. Now it's important to test the measure and make it better. It'll be fun and, and not horrible, so please turn <laughs> Exactly right. So yeah, It'll keep it simple. Fun Final, final things, um, like I say, uh, please fill in the feedback afterwards. Eloise uh, offers a fantastic free strategy review uh, to look in, uh, at your Amazon and how to grow it. So I suggest you all take her up on that. We're also doing our free website audits. If anyone's interested in have a look at their site and how it might be able to be improved. And again, we're always happy to jump on uh, a free strategy call to talk about how we can grow your e-commerce business. But certainly for myself, thank you all so much for joining us today. I really appreciate the support. We'll have a look at these Q&As in a sec. And uh, Eloise, thank you so much for being a wonderful co-host. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, guys, for jumping on. Um, looking forward to, to seeing you again later in the week for those jumping on the Amazon one.